and at the moment all the old Land Rovers are pouring in. Sharp looking car indeed. Wandering around the auto jumble, what do we find? But a glorious 1936 Packard for sale. Well, welcome to Old Classic Car, and we find ourselves in the middle of another field and another classic and vintage rally. And at the moment, all the old Land Rovers are pouring in. Hopefully there'll be cars, lorries, steam and a bit of tractor pulling going on today so I'll probably split this video into cars and commercial vehicles. Very nice console Capri there. Triumph Stag. David Brown. Let's have a look see what other cars are here. A pair of Vauxhall Chevettes. It's not often you see one, let alone two. A VW Beetle. An Austin A30 four-door. This MGA we saw at Cape Thorn, I think, and the Mark 1 Granada Coupe. Part next to that is an MGB Roadster. And an Austin Allegro. At the end here we've got a very nice uh, Singer, little Singer Gazelle, probably about 1960, something like that. Have another quick look at this Granada. You don't see these too often. This is a Granada gear, top of the tree. Back to the cars and let's see what we've got on road two. We've got an Escort Cabriolet. Alongside that there's a Mark 1 Ford Escort four-door saloon and registration. So what's that about 1973-74? Another Escort Cabriolet and a slightly later one. A Mark 5, the white one I think. Various other Fords and a P100 pickup. This is a second version based on the, well, loosely based on the Sierra. The earlier P100s had the Cortina style front end on them. And we've got a Mark II Ford Fiesta, very clean one. <laughs> well, you're over 21 now, so. The immaculate Ford Cortina Mark II. Next up a Mini, another Chevette, a Chevette Grenadier. Quite a late example, was that about 1983-84? Was that a limited edition? I'm assuming so. 
What's it say here in the window? Yeah, I've never seen one of those before. Alongside that, we have a split screen Morris 6 or 800 weight van. Split screen Series 2 van. This was at the show we went to last weekend, but the bonnet was up so we couldn't see the split windscreen properly, so we can have a proper look now. Semaphore indicators on the side, hadn't yet moved to flashing indicators. A sun visor, has a bit of information, 1955. First owner in Deal, Kent, and used it for transporting his trials motorbike. Quite a rare survivor now. Of course, the, the commercial Morris miners, the vans and the pickups, had a separate chassis, whereas the saloons and the Woody Traveller estate, they were monocoque. And on the Traveller, the wood was structural. And then we've got a MG Midget. Very smart green MG Roadster, MGB Roadster. It's a 73. And a Mini Clubman Estate. Also L registration. And alongside the Mini Clubman Estate is a Mini Clubman Estate. This one has the fake wood on the side. A little further down we've got a Morris Oxford, the Farina Morris Oxford. And the Riley 1.5 with a sliding steel sunroof. That must be quite a rare option. Twin carburetors as befitted the Riley version. The Wolseley 1500 had the single carb. And this had the twin carb because it was the sportier of the two if you like. Is an immaculate example. Next up, a four door BMW E30, a GT6. I think we saw this last weekend as well, Mark III. Here's the Rover 3 litre that we saw driving in before, the P5 series, before they went to the Rover V8 engine. So these are the straight six. And we got a console Capri GT. Here we've got a half ton Chevrolet. This these uh, this era of truck was built from 41 to 46 and this is a 46. Bit of a rat rod. Quite a cool looking ride. Alongside that we've got a very smart Mark 1 Ford Capri. I'm guessing this is a 3 litre or a 3.1. says V8 on the back. Alongside the V8 Capri, got a Mark 1 MX5 Shropshire registration. Minivan, Mini 95. Kit car with a Daimler uh, V8 250 grille on it. Next to the Noble, we've got a Mark III Mini. By this time, they've gone to the wind up windows and the concealed door hinges. And the double gutter, of course, and then a lime green MGB GT, and another Mark One Ford Granada, three litre.
This is a console Granada Mark 1. Got an 80s Mini, an 80s Citroen 2CV, and a very impressive Plymouth satellite. Gigantic car, left hand drive. What an amazing bit of kit! Nice roof rack. In many ways I prefer this era of American car to the earlier ones with the big fins. I think they're just a little bit over the top. But when the things went a little bit more subtle towards the late sort of mid to late 1960s, I think they're a bit more appealing to be honest. This is a 1970 as the original supplying dealer. I think that's pretty neat. And alongside the mighty Plymouth, there's another slice of Americana. We've got a late 1940s Ford truck. Pair of minis. A smart chrome bumper MGB GT. An immaculate restored Morris Minor Traveller. I've seen this MGA somewhere before. Alongside that, the midget. Or is it? It is not. It is an Austin Healey Sprite, either a Mark II or a Mark III. <laughs> Alongside the DB7 we've got a Triumph Dolomite. A Herald 1360 convertible. Thirteen sixty had the twelve nine, I think twelve nine six cc four cylinder engine. Of course, you could get the Vitesse as well. That had the twin headlamps either side. And here, an early Toyota Land Cruiser. Our registration to mid to late seventies. These are really quite sought after now. Right on to the next row. We've got an interesting little three wheeler here. Not quite sure what that is. And a mighty Chevy Silverado pickup truck of the 1970s. Another Chevy alongside, a little newer. It's for sale. Uh, but back to good old British cars, and we have a Mark II Ford console here, complete with optional sun visor, furry dice, and Screen pillow mounted lamp there. Very rock and roll era. A few extra lamps, etc. Got the portholes on the front wing. Again, optional. Alongside that, we've got a Morris Minor two door. I think is that rose taupe that colour? Mark II Golf, Mark I Ford Fiesta in two tone no less. <laughs> Alongside that we've got a nice big Healy from 1966. Left hand drive, so presumably an import from the States. Let me just tell you though, let me finish my story. He went five and three pounds. A little badge there on the back of the mirror for Westport, Connecticut. Uh, 
and a yet another Mark 1 for Fiesta. Nice bright yellow car, but this one isn't two tone. This is a Popular Plus 1981. Alongside that slightly earlier Ford, this is a Ford 100E Anglia, the two door Anglia. The four doors were the prefect, the two door was either the popular or the Anglia. 1172 side valve power. Got a few stats there on the screen maximum speed 73 miles per hour, 0 to 60 in 29 seconds, max power 36 brake horsepower. Number produced 345,000. A white TR6, two and a half litre fuel injected car, an MGC GT. It's got the bump in the bonnet there for the straight six that's hidden under the bonnet. I'm sure there's a story behind that badge. Got a twin cam Mark 1 Escort, Lotus Power. Another Mark 1 Escort, this time a 4 door 1300L, just for comparison. So we've got a 2 door twin cam and a 4 door 1300L. I wonder which is the rare. And then we've got a very smart black 2 door Austin A35. Another car with a period sun visor. Stag. Mark 1, I think, Triumph Stag. A pretty cool little Renault Gordini. A Renault 12. Such a rare survivor. I mean, at one time these things used to be everywhere, but you just don't see them at all now. This one pops up at local shows every now and again, but it's about the only one that does. Alongside that, we've got a Series 3 XJ. Daimler version of a Series 3. We appear to be heading into Jaguar country now. A Series 2 E Type. And another one. Modern X350. XJS from 1984. K8, and at the end here we've got a 1964 Alvis. Very smart indeed. A couple of fast forwards now, we've got a Capri from the early 1980s and a Fiesta Mark 1. Is this a Super Sport? Next to that, could be more different, a BMW iZ. Tucked away over here we've got a Sunbeam Rapier, the two-door coupe. Sportive the car, these were popular in rallying in the late 1950s. This is a Series 3A. Very well equipped with all the instrumentation as befits a sport of the car. Some of these were overdrive, some weren't. I'm guessing this is with the extra lever on the 
steering column. There it is, overdrive. That's really nice, that is. That's based on the slightly more prosaic Hillman Minx. The Mark 1 MX5. Over here we've got a nice early Carmen gear. Is this the Razor Edge? I'm not quite sure. 1964. Very sharp looking car indeed. Somewhat modified Vauxhall PA. Started out as a Vauxhall PA Velox. The late arrival is this two door Ford Model Y. Tudor for two door. They did a four door version as well and the occasional van. But most are two door saloons, I think. This has the eight horse engine, the same engine as is in my Anglia, but this is pre war, early 1930s. And it's a long rad. The very first Model Ys had a shorter radiator and a straight bumper. Then they went to the longer radiator, and in order that you could use a starting handle, i.e., just below the AA badge there, they had to put a dip in the front bumper. Very similar in style to the Morris 8. I think I actually prefer the Model Y. Next to the RS2000, we've got a Rover P2, Rover 12 Tourer. And it's a jungle. Next to that, an immaculate Wolseley Hornet, posh version of the Mini with a boot. And an Austin Cambridge, this could be an A40 Cambridge or an A50. Let's have a look see which one it is. the A40. And next to that is a booted Vauxhall Nova. Getting quite thin on the ground now. An XR3i Cabriolet. And the Allegra based Vanden Plas 1500. Here we've got a Royal Mail Reliant Supervan. This is based on the Regal Saloon, but this is the van version. Usually painted yellow, so it's nice to see a red one for a change. Here we have a Lanchester LD10. There were two versions of these built over the years. There was the same front end. Um, one was coach built by Barker, it had a four light, i.e. two windows per side bodywork, and that had ash construction. This is a Briggs bodied LD10. Briggs eventually was bought out by Ford, um, and this is an all steel body I think. Four door, very neat little cars, by, the t uh, by this point Lanchester were tied in with uh, Daimler at the time. These had the pre-selected gearbox just like Daimler, and they're very very nice, good quality little car. It's a bit of information about it there. There's a pre-selector arrangement on the side of the steering column. So we looked at a Daimler DB18 the other day and explained a little bit how the pre-selector works. So you'd approaching a corner, for example, you'd change down to so plop it into the next gear that you wanted. And only when you actually wanted the gear, you dabbed the pedal uh, on the left-hand side on the floor where a clutch pedal would normally be, but these don't have a clutch. Here 
here we have a Morris Marina Coupe. Wonder where that's been. Next up a very smart Wolseley. This could be pre or post war. I think this is a 1460 from 1939. Into vintage times now. We've got a vintage Dodge. Six of the late 1920s. This is the Victory Six, slightly later car than mine. Always nice to see a few vintage cars at these events. This Dodge Charger doesn't need any introduction. If anyone remembers the Fall Guy TV series, there's a reproduction of the truck that Colt Seavers, I think it was, used to drive around in. This Mark III Triumph Spitfire takes me back to the first car I pieced together back in the late 1980s. Wasn't quite as shiny as this one. Something I've never seen before, 1917 Ford Model T pickup truck. Thank you. 
Well, alongside that, slightly later American car, a Pontiac Firebird, 1980s. A couple of kit cars, a Pilgrim and a Spartan. A Mark II of Ford Escort, RS2000. Last of the rear wheel drive fast Fords, really. Um, not long after that, it was the Ford Escort that came along that was the hatchback version, the Mark III. The XR3 it was the RS 1600i, the XR3, and then the XR3i, and the Series 1 RS Turbo came along as well. But this was the last of the rear drivers. Next up, a Rover 100 P4. And a mighty Cadillac Eldorado, 1972. And then next to that we've got a little four-door bullnose Morris. Looks like a Cowley. Oh, it's an Oxford. No running boards, separate little wings. Very much a barrel-shaped body on it. You can see that. Several pre-war cars in this row actually, so let's keep going. Alongside the Morris Oxford, we've got an Austin A35 pickup. This was on show at Cape Thorn Hall only the other week. Fantastic little car that is. Alongside the pickup, we've got a Frog Eye Sprite, the Austin Healy Sprite Mark One MG. Another MG, an MG TF this time. Another Ford Model T. You don't see one for ages, then two come along at once. No braking on the front of these as standard. <laughs> Alongside the Model T we've got an Austin 16. These were made either side of World War II, this could be a post-war car, it could be pre-war. Next to the Austin, we've got a Rolls Royce, a Silver Cloud, a two door Ford Escort Mark 1, a 1300 XL, XEH, that's a Staffordshire registration. There's a Morris Minor Tourer that came in earlier on. Quite an early car, a magnificent pre war Rolls Royce BLX 987. Wind up partition for the people sat in the rear compartment. And the driver sits out here. Morris Traveller. And at the end of the row is the lovely old four door saloon Humber that we saw the other week.
looking here over here, we've got a lovely Morris J type from the 1950s. Been guarded. There are also quite a few period caravans dotted around for the weekend. Here is a Regency, I'm guessing late 60s, early 70s, fiberglass. There's a little Mustang, and over here, I had one of these once, this is a Porterfold folding caravan. The early ones had the fins on the roof, the later ones didn't. And the early ones had the tubular chassis, the later ones didn't. <laughs> Great little thing, the one I had came from Beaulieu Auto Jumble. So the roof sort of hinges up and then you fold the sides in and the roof comes back down and it's sort of yay high. Great to tow behind the smaller car. Carlite Castellette from 1975, 12 feet long. What a Bobby Dazzler that is. Spec for CF. Here we got a bay window VW. The first of probably several Bedford campers. This is a late Bedford CA G registration. And its replacement, the Bedford CF Mark I, this is K Reg 1972. More Bedfords, two CF Mark 1s again, one P Reg, the other M registration. <laughs> Alongside the two Bedfords, we've got a Sherpa based camper van. Called Brian. And VW Camper Corner now, a bay window here. Another one. And another one. All different window configurations and interior. Cruiser looking split window camper. Continuing along Volkswagen Row, another bay window. A few more old caravans, 1960s, 1970s vintage. This is a Sterling, supplied by Stevenson West of Sirencester. And we have a Bedford CF350 camper. I think these old steam rallies are where most of these old campers come to live out their final years. It's for a long weekend of vintage rallying. It's just about perfect really.
Wandering around the auto jumble, what do we find but a glorious 1936 Packard for sale? Probably more my size. Well, I think that concludes our look at the classic and vintage cars that turned up at uh, Smallwood this particular weekend, uh, 2021. So, thanks very much for watching. Please check out the rest of the channel for more videos on classic cars and so on, and more videos like it along very soon. Bye for now.